Hello, everybody. You are now listening to the Overflow Podcast with Jay and Joaquin. All I know is that I'm glad I didn't eat chili today for dinner. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that makes two of us. What the hell? <laughs> What's up? What's up? As always, this is Joaquin. And I'm Jake. And we are so glad that you are with us chili on free. today. Chili free. <laughs> Unless you had chili at home. And thank you for Having chili, at home. having chili, having <laughs> chili at home. Um, no, this that, is why we don't do this in front of a live studio. Audience. That will, um, that will make more sense in a little bit. In a little bit, maybe, perhaps. It might still not make any sense. But uh, what up, Jay? What's going on, man? How, what you been up to? How's your week, yeah, man? Yeah, 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 yeah. So what's what's popping? What's popping? Pop Absolutely, yo. I had. It. I had something to tell you. In the land of Jay. I had something to tell you, but I I, I, I forgot. It must have been a lie. Damn, I forgot for real. What was it? It had something to do with... with um... Oh, no, it's what I told you. It's what I told you. It's what I told you. Right. It's what I told you about, about, about baby girl. So. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Baby yeah, yeah, girl. Yeah, yeah. So, baby girl is all about her daddy. So, oh, that's right. So, that's right. So, why why is she all about right, her daddy? All about her daddy. So, she started daycare. Right. Right. It's been over a week, over a week at daycare. Right. And, um, you know, kids always color or they draw things. And for the most part, in my experience, right. I'm five kids in. Five in kids. In my experience, every time that you know something of. is drawn or colored in or whatever, Every time that something is created in school or daycare or whatever, it's always for mom. For mom, right. right? Mommy gets everything. Mommy gets all the, right? Even Cal. Cal, the same Cal, now that he's in pre-K, right? Did this whole elaborate picture with rainbows, whatever. Right. Two people. Mommy and me. Right? <laughs> Daddy don't exist. All in my face. Where's I only, Poppy? <laughs> I only get stuff like specifically. Superhero. Father's Day. Right. Right when they're forced to right. do something for right. their you father, you gotta do something for right? your daddy. Right, so baby girl, she's now in daycare for over a week. Every day, every day, every day, she's come. She's come home with a coloring. You know, I mean, she's two, so it's just whatever. Right, right? It's, it's lines but, of colors. But but everything has been for Poppy. Nice, Poppy. Oh hey, no, this for Poppy. No, are this you for Poppy. are you putting it on the refrigerator? To... I'm putting it on the fridge, on I'm the TV, it on the, TV. <laughs> on the I'm ceiling. Yeah, you know, I keep getting asked. So, are you going to take this to work? No, but if it's at work, you won't see it. You won't see it. <laughs> I'm putting it on the mirror in the bathroom. Right? <laughs> and the funny thing is that the, the funny thing is that for what I was told, the teacher asked her, asked her one day, um, "Are you not going to do anything for mommy?" <laughs> and she said, "Nope, Poppy." No, nope. uh, so I win. Putting it inside of Magda's <laughs> eyelids, so I when she win. closes her eyes to go to sleep, I mean, it's bad enough that every morning, you know, because now they're both going to the same place. Okay, so we're both taking them, right? Because now we have to leave a little earlier because pre-K is on a on a schedule. It's not like daycare that it's just whenever, right? So, um, <laughs> so we're going to the same place every morning. The fight. It's not even a fight. She's like, oh, actually, there is a fight, but the fight is different. So every morning, it's like, I'm going in Poppy's car. So she always wants to travel with me. Right. And if, and if Bean says, no, I, I'm going to go in Poppy's car. No, you go Mommy's car. I'll go in Poppy's car. <laughs> uh, well, but that, you know, right, that's what they say, right? Daddy's girl. Yep. Mama's boy. So. Yep. <clears throat> definitely, definitely a daddy's girl. That's and I couldn't be any happier. Happier, yeah. Even though the, the other ones are jealous, especially Milena. Milena, <laughs> <laughs> you're still daddy's girl. No one can take her spot, yeah. right? She's she's number one. Right, right. It's like uh, what's the joke? Uh, Adam Carolla says he goes, uh, he goes, yeah. I know they tell you because he's got twins, and he goes, I know they tell you, you know. Uh, you know, they're your kids and you love them. You're supposed to love them the same and you're not supposed to have a favorite. But he knows what's up because <laughs> he's a boy and a girl twin. Yeah. <laughs> but he knows what's up. <laughs> Yo, 
it's funny. Um, I was talking to this to this brother and sister. I was talking to this brother and sister, right? Because right. the brother was a little bit older than the sister, and um, and I was telling, and I'm like, and I'm telling her because she's telling her to like to help him, and she's like, no, no, it's like I'm telling her, hey, you know, you guys are supposed to be Christians, then you know that you need to respect the older brother. Right. Right. He's not asking you to go play in traffic, right? He's asking you to help him sell these tacos. So you need to be ob- you know, be obedient to your dad and listen to your older brother. Right. right. And then he's like, you see, I told you I won. I was like, but wait, 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 wait. Wait. That can only be that can that can only be true if you answer this one question. And he was like, What? What's the question? Is she the baby girl? He's like, yeah, she's the youngest. She's the baby girl. Then, yeah. So then, completely ignore what I just said. Baby yeah. girl always wins. Yeah, tell her to go play in traffic. <laughs> the, ba- the baby sister always <laughs> wins. And then, yeah. the father, and then the father was there. He was like, yep. Oh. I was like, we're not supposed to say that, but right. ask your dad. Ask your dad. Dad yeah. knows us I mean, hey. Speaking of. I lived it. I got a baby sister. Every I lost yeah. everything when she was born. Yeah. I, I have two sisters. I lost it all in the... When the first one was born, and then forget about it when forget the second the one was born. was born. Man, that's bunk. <laughs> uh, speaking of tacos, mm, tacos. Uh, I got to give a shout out to, uh, to if anybody's listening that's out in uh, Miami, because oh, uh, check out uh, Blaze um, Don Manuel's tacos. Don Manuel's tacos. He's been doing these pop ups, um, and it's been going really, really well. I had a question though. Can I ask the question here? It's a little, it's a little funny. So he's making, so so Blaze is what is he? Is he Mexican, he's, Dominican? He's Puerto Dominican. He's Puerto 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 Dominican. <laughs> I can't even say it. <laughs> he's Dominican. There he's we Dominican. go. There you go. <laughs> Not much easier to say, but he's doing tacos. Yeah. Is that cultural appropriation? <laughs> nope, because we're all Latinos. Ah, <laughs> uh, well, I I and I say that because remember that Venezuelan that Venezuelan. Fashion guy got in trouble with the Mexican government because they were using those patterns from like the Mexico. I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. I follow art. I follow a little bit of everything. I'm a <laughs> Renaissance man. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, you, so, you didn't send that to me. Oh, I didn't send that to you. Uh, so there was this fashion designer who's Venezuelan, and his fashion house uh, released a line of clothing. Okay. Obviously, because it's a fashion house. Right. Uh, using that, you know, the colorful, uh, that colorful Mexican, like the. I think they use it for like the dresses and it's all different colors and um Okay. Uh so the Mexican government got mad and they were like, yo, you're appropriating our our designs. It's like a very specific design to like a, that part of Mexico. And they're like, You're appropriating our design, but it was it was done by a a fashion a fashion house that's owned by a Venezuelan that runs it. You know, it's it's funny and because so that's why I was, so that's why I'm saying it's like yeah, wait a minute. That's, it's funny because whenever it comes to that, right? I always say, yo, like we we all come from the same Indian, right? Nah, it's all this. It's all I don't this, come from any Indian. It's all it's all the same Indian, right? <laughs> so like, is it though? Yeah, it it, it kind of is because are the, when, when are the when, Aztecs the same as the Tainos? When the Tainos, the Aztecs look, were, were were way more violent than well, the Tainos, super violent. But when the Tainos Incas, were, were, out of the were escaping, were escaping the, the, um, the Aztecs, Puerto Rico, <laughs> when they were escaping Puerto Rico or, or Puerto Rican as it was back then, a lot of them made it to South America, and they just. And if you saw Apocalypto, you know what happened to them. They got, <laughs> they got their hearts but taken they were, out. Um, I don't. I don't know. I guess they were, they were appropriated. The, the, right? the Tainos, the Tainos landed. Into, and they were like. Hola, mijos! <laughs> and the Aztecs went, Rawr. They were appropriated or, or, or they were assimilated into... I just upset everybody. In, into Incan culture. Like, they became with them. And some Incan of them... Incan or Aztec. Or Aztec, one of those. And then what, And then they went into Puerto Rico to help... <laughs> to, help it's the, it's the to help the Tainos fight right. the, the colonists or the, con, or the conquistadores. Right. Right, because it was more... But by then, the conquistadores were, were already... A, they were Spanish. already in Mexico, so it was like, <laughs> oh! <laughs> they right? got horses. So, so the Indian is the Indian. <laughs> they got it's, horses. It's, it's so funny to me that that happened. But it, yeah, it was. It, but no, but the fight. They, no, anyway. So the the point was, I just I was laughing on the last couple of posts from the from this last weekend when he did his pop up, and I was just I was just thinking, right? I was just thinking like, yo, this dude's not Mexican and he's doing tacos, and obviously we don't care because yeah. that's who we are. It's whatever. But 
I just I'll, that's what popped in my head. Suppo- but but supposedly, well, not even supposedly, but apparently, like he sells out quick. Well, I mean, that's what he says. Like he sells no, but someone else told me. <laughs> Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, like, that's what Blaze said. Like I'm going to believe what Blaze like says. Someone, someone else told me right, 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 that, right. Um, that they go like, quick. They go quick. Right? Right. Like, he said, so what's over that? They went to yeah. the first one and they got there too late. So, so they showed up early for the second one because he does pop ups as he right, goes. Right, right. So they showed up early to the second one so they, <laughs> so they could get some tacos. Yo, that's where you hit them up and you'd be like, yo, dog, um, I'm gonna, I want to buy, I want to buy like 10. So just put ten aside Yo, for it's me. It's funny though, right? Because I'll I was pay a premium. To, I was supposed to be in Miami this past weekend, right? For and my right for, for, for ex, the, Expo League. Yeah, and my my plan in my brain, my plan was I bet. So I'm gonna be in Miami for Expo League, and he's got a taco pop up. Right. right. So I'm gonna be there early. Right. Get so some I tacos. Get some, support the dude. Right. right. And, then, and then and then and then I'm talking to Bogdan. I was like, but. I'm going to try to not be there too early because since we're boys, he's going to put me to work. <laughs> like, Yo, give me four tacos. Oh, right here. Yo, how were they? Yo, they were awesome. Yo, can you get some jaritos for me? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they're, be like, uh, they're like, Yo, the tacos we're getting from the the skin, the tall skinny guy, they don't taste like the other tacos because you over there like putting out ovo and everything. <laughs> You make it the taco. You put cilantro, putting, the onions, not, not even, and adobo. I'm, I'm putting half. I'm putting half the meat. Yo, you gotta make them last. You gotta make half the meat. <laughs> Yo, how come he has more meat? You got more meat than tacos I than I do. I don't know. I don't I don't know. know. That's the heat. The heat. And why am I tasting adobo in these tacos? <laughs> <laughs> I taste cilantro, onions, adobo. <laughs> <laughs> Get the Puerto Rican away. Get the Puerto Rican out of there. But I've known Blaze for years. Ain't I know that cooking said, has been ain't nobody said I can't cooking has been like a secret tacos. passion of his. Remember when he used to have the yeah. the the cooking <clears throat> YouTube shows? He had the the where he did the reviews. The reviews uh-huh. and stuff. Yeah, no, that's it's you know, it's dope. And like right now he is like living the dream. Like he brought that. He brought yeah, that, yeah. That, that taco. He, he, learned how, he, learned, he, learned, he learned how to make tacos in Houston. In Houston, right? He, he bought that in Houston and he brought it back with him. Of course he did. Because right? in Houston, it was like five bucks. For, like, it, was like, it was like two grills for 10. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, he went to the Mexican flea market and, not, uh, and, he, not, and it was where he got it from. I'm not even lying. Like, I'm, I'm dying to try some. Yo, me, I mean, me too, right? Because I've, I've been seeing. No, yeah, it's, you know, and, and for anybody that, you know, we 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 jest in fun, as we do because yeah we 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 you know we love Blaze. Um, I don't know him as well as as Jay, but um, you know anybody 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 whose mom will let me and Jay stay at the house before we get on a boat. Um, <laughs> Word. You know what? You're a okay in my yeah, book. Feed us, take care of us. You know that's that's what yeah. That's the family right there. You know, they let the white Rican in. I remember when he told me he was going to do this. Dude, I swear to you, like, no no part of me was against it. I thought it was a bad idea. Right. Because, like, knowing knowing who he right. is and what his passions are, right. I was like, bye, <clears throat> yo, that's, like, the best thing you said. No, I, you know, it's funny you said it because, you know, it, it, when I saw that that's what he was doing, I was like, oh, okay. Like I said, I don't know Blaze like that, right? I've only met right, him a right, couple right, right. of times, but... From what I know of him and from what I've seen and and uh <clears throat> and how he has, you know, uh when he had the radio station and he would plug us on the radio station uh-huh. or whatever, you know, so you know, so he's got a lot I he's got a lot of goodwill with me. And right. so when I saw that, you know, y'all he was doing it, I was like, oh, okay, okay, Blaze is appropriating tacos. That's dope. <laughs> they will be good. They they'll probably be good. No, I didn't even think about I didn't think about that till, till last week. I'll be honest. I didn't think about it until last week. <laughs> but um so no, man, that's exciting. That's exciting. It's exciting that he's doing that. Maybe we should, uh, we, maybe like if we, if we put together an event or something in the future, we'll, we'll bring him up, and then we'll just be like, nah, you just you're just feeding us. Nobody else could eat. <laughs> It'll be, be tacos for the Overflow podcast. Um, Don Manuel tacos. Don Manuel so tacos. Attention. Yeah, so if you're in Miami, Don, Ma- Don Manuel tacos is um is on Instagram, is on Insta? just like that. Don um, Manuel pay tacos. Pay attention if you're in Miami. Yeah. Pay attention for the next pop up and yeah. go, support, go support the support dude the, and get some tacos because yo, the taco king tacos are delicious. Taco king, taco speaking king. of tacos, mm. we got to give a shout out our favorite pizza place. Word, 
Speaking we, of tacos, going to pizza. Speaking of, hey man, we hit, we hitting everybody. We are hitting the Mexicans. We are hitting the Italians. We hitting everybody. Um, y'all favorite pizza place, Lopardo's, oh, uh, had a soft opening. Uh, Saturday. Saturday. It's funny. It was a uh, friends and family opening. Yeah, and so, um, and so we're friends and family. I don't, I don't know if we fall under the friends or family. Or family, because we uh, we like, hey, we were speaking yo, like this. Yo, no lie, it's like a Mario. No lie, like it felt great to be there and have a slice of pizza. Not just having a slice of pizza and but getting just, bloated because I don't eat carbs, <laughs> right? But just just seeing them again, right? Yes. And being there, yeah. It was seeing them right? and and, um, and seeing the new spot and and because yeah. um like like we've been going there. Since they not, first opened, yeah, not right? not Years long ago. after they opened, right? yeah, when we discovered so, them, or you so, discovered, you might have discovered them first. Yeah, it was me. I, I was there. And then day, you, I was there day one, and then you took me. <laughs> yeah, you were there day one, but then they knew my order the moment I walked in the door because I used to go eat there once a week <laughs> I, I, at, a, at least. No, but remember that's when I was working security, right? So I used to eat there every day, right? Like literally, because I was working security from like five to one, right? So I would leave. I would. I would. I would leave the consulate. And drive up there and have my my two slices at a Pepsi and then go see and then go see the wife at work. Yeah. Yeah. Like, <laughs> or have her meet me there. Yeah, I would yeah, like I had a, a rotation of things I would eat. Uh-huh. So I, the moment I walked in, man, Scott would be like, Yeah. Yo, hey man. And you had your wings, your, your, my your wings, slices and your wings. My slices, my wings, or sometimes I do the Sicilian, oh, no the Sicilian. slice, or sometimes I do the wings. Yeah, go back. Oh, actually, they're not they weren't doing Sicilians yet. Uh, or I'd go back and get wings and the cheese bread because that cheese yeah, bread was cheese bread bomb. Was so yeah, like so it was great going and breaking my diet for them. Yeah, and 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 eating and seeing them and you know the pizza is just as good as yeah. I remember, right? You know, because that's always a fear when yeah, when a, a place fear. reopens that maybe they they lost that uh, or they changed that something. something or whatever. And it's but these guys are the pizza same. guys. They're Brooklyn right. pizza guys. All they've been doing their whole life. Well, yeah, but I mean, it, it's just no, no, it, it just is what it is, right? As far I'm as saying, that, that's that's a great thing because you know yeah. you go there and you're you're like getting guaranteed yeah you're getting good a pizza. good slice of pizza and that's one of the few places that you can take a snobby New Yorker to and they're like yo this is good yes right because one. I'm one of those snobby New ah Yorkers. you're not not really you're not that snobby I I, I, I kind of not am. you're not I'm, that I, snobby I, I have a, yeah I have a lot more grace but you because you like pizza I think that's but, that's yeah, the I difference just, I just you love pizza, love pizza. <laughs> it's the greatest but, food ever but like um. But like I've taken my brothers, right, right. But that's and, what I'm saying. Like right? your brothers, I've taken my brothers were, and they love it. I taken snob. Junior, Junior, who's a snob. Right, Junior loves it. Mom, mom won't pe- won't eat pizza anywhere else. Yeah, your mom's another snob. <laughs> she won't eat pizza anywhere else. As a matter of fact, when she saw that we were there, because bunch of bougie New Yorkers. When, when I reached, when I reached out <laughs> to her, Rock. when I reached out to her, so we can so we can bring her, right, right. She didn't respond, and then when she saw that we were there. Oh, you guys left oh, yeah, me. You, uh, uh, no, 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 no. You no, gotta no. respond because I'm not waiting. Uh, I, I know uh, you're my mother and I love you, but I ain't waiting. <laughs> all these, all these bougie far rock away <laughs> with their so pizza. So she was like, oh, bring me a slice. That, then we went to her house. She's like, where's my slice? I was like, in my belly. In my belly. <laughs> <laughs> so shout out Lepardo's. Lepardo's, Lepardo's is on Busby. So it's on Busby Avenue. On Busby, if you're in Kennesaw. Behind, in Kennesaw, behind um, Town Center Mall. Town Center Mall. Yep. It's the, for me, of all the places that say New York style, this is the New York style. Yeah. Like, straight. well, what well, the diff, right? Because, because, you know, most places, it's what's funny is that the New York style, what they're talking about is just the big slice. The big slice. Or the fact that you can buy a slice. A, or the, you know, which is amazing because I don't need to buy a whole pie anymore. I could because I used to be able to put them away. Dude, I, me too, but I don't think I can anymore. No, nah, I, Dude, I I ate my two slices, my wings, yeah, and then I ate an extra slice off of y'all's pie, yeah, and I was like, I should not have eaten that third <laughs> slice. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like I was like, dude, I ate the yeah, two, I that ate was the too two much. Slices. That was I too ate, much. I ate the two slices and I was like, I know that I also ate a I also ate a half of a slice. Oh my god, I really picked out. I ate the two slices and I was like, yeah, I think I'm done. Two slices, is, I shouldn't have had the wings. And then I had the wings really. And then I had two more slices the next day. <laughs> yeah, pizza. It's the perfect food. It's the perfect food. It's the, yeah, especially if you put like a bunch of meat and veggies, you have everything. You have all the food groups. Yeah, yeah, without a doubt. Matter of fact, who was I was arguing with somebody the other day? Because that's all I do is argue with people, and I was just like, and I was just like, pizza's the best food. Period. Yeah. Bad, good. You can, you can. 
You can get it like like uh, like a a quick trip sells it a breakfast pizza. Yep. When you get it hot, it's pretty it's, good. Yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> you know? I had, I, and I, they're I, and they're cheap. Their I, cheap pizza's good. I had that the other day, the breakfast pizza. Because it's funny. I always talk about <laughs> breakfast pizza, and then freaking Quick Trip comes out with a breakfast pizza, yeah, and I yeah. was like. You ever had just a regular a regular no. slice? It's no. it's I doughy have. because it's, you know it's just that thick doughy, yeah, but I, I can see that it's too doughy. So, it re- but so, it's so visually it reminds me of the pizza they would give us in high school, right? But it's not. I mean, for what it is, right? If you 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 you're eating it knowing what you're getting, right? When it's bre- when it's the breakfast pizza, it's still doughy, but it's, you know you know what the, bacon and the, eggs the, the so. breakfast pizza <laughs> that dough is the same as the yeah, dough for regular the know, regular. Know, it's not bad. So if you ever need a slice, an emergency slice. Go to Lopardo's. Well, quick trip, if it's an emergency slice. Go if to you want, If you want to sit down slice. No, no, because Lopardo's <laughs> isn't open. <laughs> Lopardo's might not be open. That's why it's an emergency. Yeah. You know, it's like eight o'clock, eight, 9 o'clock, and you're like, oh, what's a pizza? Yeah. Quick trip, it's like two bucks. Wow. Right? Um, but anyway, we digress. Uh, we yeah, regress see, we on talk pizza. About, we, talk mm-hmm. about, we talk about food and comic books related stuff, and that's it. We get lost. Uh, so anyway, so. But no, I agree, and I've said it for years. Pizza is the perfect food. The perfect Because not only can you pile anything on top of it, but you eat it with one hand. You eat it with one hand. How much more perfect is that? Yep. Right? And if you want to follow the 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 fake guidelines, the what is it, the nutritional pyramid. Pyramid, right? Right. You can fill up the entire pyramid just on one slice. Right. Well, except for the top, very top of the pyramid, because that's like sugar. <laughs> you don't want to put sugar on your pizza. Is it? Think so. Like th- it's like sweets or something. Yeah, oh. I, don't, I don't think you would. Yeah, you get the sweets with the tomato sauce. Come on. Yeah, uh, yeah. If you do a sweet tomato sauce, right. that's true. That's true. <laughs> yeah, with yeah. The tomato sauce. Hey, we're there. The perfect <laughs> food. And if perfect you food. and if we can get a keto crust, ah, even about it. even you better. better. <laughs> <laughs> ah, yes. it's gotta be good. I got. We gotta go to Blaze. So you gotta try that. Yeah, their yeah, their yeah. keto pizza. Maybe um, Friday with Mitch. Um, <clears throat> yo. So the point was that Lopardo's. Is open. Was good. It's open. Go check them out. Like the, the, we love those guys. The big relaunch is um, next month. Okay, cool. So well, I guess we'll, I guess we'll be there for that also. Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, play some bocce ball. Forget about it. Right, some bocce ball, which Jay faked me out on, but we're not going to go into <laughs> that. Like, I hate when I know I'm right and then I question myself. <laughs> yeah. And I know that. So I and you with. and you know I'm right, and you you <laughs> cause me to question myself. <sighs> Uh, we got right. uh, another now, announcement. Legacy Knights. I was about to say Legacy um, Knights twenty six. A couple weeks, yeah. Monday uh, the twenty six. So be there. Um, from what I understand, or B square. That's the back to school week for, for the, the college for colleges. Okay, right. So yo, come take, get a, come, come get a little Jesus before you got to go to school. Right. Yeah. Come get a little Jesus and some great coffee. Last month was amazing because was it? it was great and because. They gave out free coffee. They gave out, but that was only last week. Don't go in expecting free coffee this week. But pray for it. Not this, not not thing. this week, but not next this, week. Another week. <laughs> two week. Week. Two weeks. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. So go, make sure you go for our legacy nights. Um, it's a fun time. Um, and if you're listening and you're in the Atlanta area and you might be going to Kennesaw, great way to connect with some believers that go to Kennesaw. We right. can introduce you to some some neato neato kids. And there are and there are people that come to legacy nights. That are right. a part of Christian groups on campus, KSU, right. on campus, and right. you don't have to be a college kid to come. No, nope. I didn't tell you this because I'm not. I had we had two different people last time we met asking about what we we're doing. One guy was from South Carolina, who's a trucker, and he heard us singing, and he comes by. He goes, like, "Yo, you guys doing like a, a worship service? What's going on?" He goes, really? "Oh yeah, we do that back in my church back home." In South Carolina, with the, the the young people come in and you know do worship and stuff as a, as a black guy, so I'm, I'm assuming it's a black church, right? Um, I mean, all right, so that's why I might assume. Yeah. But um, but he was like, oh, I was excited. And then uh, uh, this couple drove up and they're like, oh, what's going on in there? I was like, oh, we're having a worship. Oh, that's awesome. That's very cool. I was oh, like, yeah, wow, you're more than welcome to. I thought I, I meant to tell you, but I just I forgot. That's so, so I'm cool. telling you now. I saw I saw a couple come in. And wanted ice cream, and then you know we right. had to be like, "Yeah, it's not ice cream. We're having an event." Yeah, it's not ice cream, <laughs> but you can stay and worship right? with us. That's what we need to start but telling they, people. But they, no, no, no. Dan, um, Dan told them. Oh, okay. But it's like, look, they, we don't have ice cream, but they turn around. But we have, that. but we have the bread of life. And then, whoa! And then there was this one guy. There was this one guy that came in. I didn't know that he, um, 
he was he, invited he, by Juice. He goes to the square. Oh, okay. I saw him come in, and like he quickly asked for a nice latte. So I was thinking that he saw <laughs> he saw on social media that they were like, "Hey, come to the ice kitchen for Legacy Nights and free coffee all night." So I was like, right. "Oh, I'm, oh, I'm gonna get, get a, some free I'm coffee." I'm gonna get free coffee. <laughs> but then I saw him turn around and sit down. I was like, "Yeah, it's like not only are you getting a free coffee, but you're getting the biscuit of life and hey, your biscuits and coffee." Womp, womp. Womp, there womp. you go. So hey, to be funny again. All right, so. Kenya. For, first and, of all, I'm always funny. Not that now, the, time. The second, <laughs> not that time. You know what? Uh, if Milena listens, she'll laugh because she gets the humor. Yeah, no, um, I don't think even she will laugh. Um, yo, no. The other thing I want to say is we posted, we posted on on Instagram. Yo, we got some big stuff coming up soon. We're super excited to be talking about it. We talked about some of the the stuff we're working on as far as the podcasts, Word. but we're getting this huge opportunity um, to be able to have a. a uh, a new bat cave. The bat cave will be moving if everything falls into place. So correct, correct, um, correct. Which we're we, going to we're going to bring together the bat cave and the fortress and of the solitude. fortress of solitude. <laughs> It'll be the fortress of bat cave. <laughs> <laughs> the bat cave of solitude. The bat cave of solitude. solitude. Well, okay. So I got the Dominican, <laughs> and you get the fortress of. The oh bad cave God. of solitude. Cough up a lung. So, well, stop smoking. Um, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Jay doesn't smoke anymore. Um, so yeah. So now, well, all right. So, so we got a uh, we got two funny kind of things we want to share that are going to lead us. Well, no. Before we share these two funny stories, I forgot. Uh, our song of the week. Go to the playlist on Spotify. The Overflow Podcast uh, music playlist. Uh, the song of the week. This dude that. Came up on one of my playlists this morning, Cole McSween. Uh, song is called "Love So Real." Uh, I, the moment I heard it, I was like, "Yo!" I, 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 the moment I heard it, as I'm driving out of my neighborhood, I'm like texting it to Jay. I'm like, "Yo, you gotta listen to this song of the week." But don't do like Joaquin. Don't text the don't, drive. Don't text it. <laughs> I was out. Of, I wasn't out of the neighborhood yet, so I was safe. Um, allegedly. Um, Dude, this song has a little bit of everything. It's got some of that like soul, some a little bit of that funk, a little bit of that like um, gospel, kind of like Andre Crouch gospel, because apparently the guy discovered him late in life, which is fine because he's, he's a young guy. Why would he know? So um, yeah, I saw that. Um <clears throat> and uh so check it out. Uh Cole McSween is called Love So Real. Like I said, it's gonna be in the it's gonna we're gonna we'll have the audio on the website. Uh, and we'll uh, we'll have it on the playlist, and then the trailer of the week because we cannot forget our girl Wonder Woman has a an an- new animated movie coming out later this year, I believe it is called Bloodlines. Wonder Woman Bloodlines. The trailer dropped. Me and Jay both went woo wee. That was fire. Yo, I sent it to very, other very, people. Very very dope. Do you know other other fans of right other nerds other fans right right. Everybody, we, we're all in agreement. Yeah, like that's probably gonna be one of the, one of the the best one to one animated movies. Yeah, that they put out. Well, I think she's only been in two. This will be the second one. <laughs> she's only had one. That's right. She only had one. <laughs> it was a good one With too. Aerie. It was still good. <laughs> but yeah, so uh, yeah, so check those out but now. They just, they just get better and better. Well, Have you seen Hush? Yeah, I bought it. I told you, I bought it. I just oh. went and bought it. Like they just get better. Yeah, Hush better. was Hush was dope. They changed the storyline a little just, bit, just a little bit. They tweaked but it the, just a little but bit. But the twist was fantastic. Oh, I was man. not. A, I was because they, they they didn't give you the twist from the comic book. Right. They they kind of changed the which, twist, which threw me off. Right. It com- right because it blew my mind. I was threw like, me off. what? I went <laughs> just like that. I went, what? As I, I was watching, what it. I did. <laughs> and Jay uh, had. I that. stood up and I was like. Get the hell out of here. <laughs> and then his boss came in and said, Jay, I need you to sit down and get back to work. <laughs> We're still waiting for the cover. We're still waiting for the front page. But uh, yeah. Get out of my office. So if you haven't seen Batman, yeah, it's like, why are you watching the movie in your boss's office? <laughs> so if you haven't seen, uh, yeah, Batman Hush, got to check it out. All right. So go ahead and, you know what? Go ahead and talk about the Kenyan thing because you started it. And oh, nobody heard me. I'm tired of talking. Go ahead. All right. So, <laughs> of course, go ahead, Pastor Joaquin sends me this article uh, about um, with the funny with the funny headline. <laughs> I just thought <laughs> at first I thought it was a fake 
a, a fake news site. Right. But it's not a fake news site. No, nah, man. Um, it's BBC News. <laughs> it came from like, BBC it News. It came from BBC News. And the Shutterstock <laughs> footage is awesome. Amazing. So the headline is, Kenya's home of bay. Fart pushes speaker to suspend debate. All right, so a heated debate about market stalls was disrupted by a foul <laughs> smell <laughs> and finger pointing <laughs> at a Kenyan regional assembly <laughs> on Wednesday. Right? Quote it, honorable speaker, one of us has polluted the air, and I know who it is. <laughs> but the accused says, comes back with, I am not the <laughs> one. I cannot do such a thing in front of my colleagues. <laughs> Yo, I'm so done. I was all done, right? And then the guy running it says, the guy running it says, we cannot continue we can't sitting continue. in an environment that smells bad. <laughs> right? If I was the guy that got accused, like if you had been like, I know the one who did it, I would have been like, ah, who smelt it? Dealt it. <laughs> point of order. Point of order. Who smelt it? Dealt it. It would have been bad. Like if, you, if we were there... To witness it all, oh, right? And that, oh, it was you. It wasn't me. <laughs> you would have said, whoever smelt it, dealt it. And I said, that's right. I concur. <laughs> whoever knew it, blew it. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, these people are trying to pass a law. They're, they're, trying, try to, yeah, they're, they're, they're trying to figure something out. It's like parliament. And they're like, and oh, no. To... Wait. Somebody fought it. No, this meeting has to end until this part smell leaves. You know, even better, like the last paragraph here, one of the short ones that said, uh, reports also say the speaker asked officials to bring in air fresheners <laughs> to, quote, <laughs> make it pleasant, get whatever flavor you will find in any office, whether it's vanilla or strawberry. We cannot continue to see environment that smells bad. Right. Hoping to clear the air, oh, the assembly speaker my goodness. then instructed members to step outside and take a break from chamber. I take a break? Dude. How small is this chamber? Yo. Yo. I mean, or how big is it? Because, you know, yo, sometimes but, these that, things are must, maybe he was along. Maybe he was a big Kenyan. But, yo, yo that, talk about when I saw that, deadly, silent right? but deadly. You know it, what, though? It had to be inside of a deadly one because they were trying to figure out who did it. Right. Right. They they would have caught me because I have a thing when I fart, like if you if if you look at me, I'll just start laughing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I had to tell uh, one of the Orange Theory coaches, I was like, "Yo, man, if you ever look over at me on the treadmill and I'm kind of smiling and kind of giggling or whatever, you don't want to walk behind me because <laughs> that just means I pass some gas." And he walked right into one of them one day, and he got he got kind of mad, but I warned him. Yeah, that's all I got to say about that. Yeah, um, yo, so yeah, yo, I, so remember, guys. I read that and I was dying, right? So because it's like, you know, if it's a classroom, if it's right. like whatever, it's you, not students. It like, was grown men, grown men, in like some courthouse. Right? They were in chambers, in chamber discussing for a law policy, discussing what like, they were going to do. Discussing policy, market what they were going to do with market stalls, right? Discussing policy, Kenyan Regional Assembly, right, right. Right, and it's like, yo, <laughs> what the hell? Who fought it? Who fought it? Yeah. I know who fought it. it wasn't me. That's the that's <laughs> the best. That's the best part. It's like, your speaker, I know who fought it. <laughs> it wasn't me. <laughs> it was it not me. me. <laughs> it wasn't me. So somebody has some chili that day. <laughs> um. Oh, all right. So so that's oh, yeah. Come, that's that's it. Come back with air. Go back. Walking there with the, with the, little, <laughs> the little trees. The little trees. Tree. It was like vanilla and strawberry. We don't care. <laughs> uh, they never gave it to one of the, the like the officers, one of the cops. Oh you go in. God. You go in. He puts on the gas. It's like when they come back in, when they come back in, they're being handled. Each one there's being handled. <sighs> so anyway, so that's that. Um, now Jay's got a good little story to share with us as we jump into um, uh, today's uh, topic. All right, all right, so we'll we'll so we'll, we'll we'll skip the story for now. All right, so Jay, what's oh, this? This is all you, son. Nah, man. Nope, this is your article, you, your thing. I found the article. You said let's talk about it today because you trump it back. You trump me. Nope. Womp womp. <laughs> nope. All right, so I found love, this. Love Trump's hate. <laughs> love Trump's hate. <laughs> I, <laughs> love Trump's hate. So so I trump you. You trump me. I don't get it. I don't know. Here's the thing. 
we found this article a couple of weeks ago now. Uh, I want to talk about it, but we had kind of hit some other things. Um, and it was, uh, the, the article was, should we use secular music in worship? And so when I saw this, I knew like, yo, let me send it to Jay. Even though Jay might have got the same email, I might have caught it earlier than he did. Yeah. I um, because Jay has experience with this. I don't, but Jay does. So I was like, oh, let me send this to Jay because he has experience with secular yeah, music. I do. <laughs> secular music being played. Uh, in in a church service. So now it, it comes from uh, a question that was sent in, and um, <clears throat> and so we'll read the question and then we'll we'll dive right into Jay's experience with it and kind of some of the points the uh, the author brought up, uh, which we thought you know they were worth exploring. Word. So the question was: I recently came across a message board where folks were discussing secular songs that could be done to make quote unquote seekers feel more comfortable at church. Uh, some folks mentioned that they had been to churches where songs were used, such as She Will Be Loved by Maroon 5, Your Body is a Wonderland by John Mayer. And, and that was because that Sunday service was about sexuality. Lots of you too, um, <clears throat> uh, et cetera. I'm really interested to hear, and the guy was like, I'm really interested to hear your thoughts about, you know, what are doing these songs or whatever. And here was kind of the, the main thing. Should we seek to evangelize during our times of worshiping God through singing corporately? And, if, and it's almost like he's really asking two different questions. Yeah, that's what it seems like to me. Right? It's like he, he's asking two, two different uh, questions. So, um, <clears throat> so before we jump into, the, into that, why don't you share with well, us your experience? I have two experience. experiences. I have an experience where I was part of the worship team of a church and... The pastor, the pastor demanded that the worship team cover. Oh my God, I forgot. Superstitious by Stevie Wonder. Stevie Wonder. Oh, I wish. <laughs> no, it was um, it was a U two song. Uh, was it the? I still haven't found what I'm looking for. No, I wish that one's awesome. Uh, I mean, that was based on a song. Yeah, I know. It was um. Oh my gosh, the one where they talk Ak-tung, about Octung Bay, whatever it's no, called. No. <laughs> the one where it talks about the Pop. Noah's Ark, the dove. And dove's know. cry? No, that's uh that's Prince. That's Prince. Nah, I don't I don't know that. Well, I whatever, know that but I, I had to sing a U two song. A U two song. Um U two, huh? But but the difference though is that this song, it was the last song. Right? So it wasn't like, oh, yeah, we're going to open worship by singing this U2 song. It was the last song that we sang, and it led to the sermon. Okay. Right? So it was almost like the precursor to the sermon. Right. right? It was connected to the sermon. Right? Um, but then that one, like, I just remembered that one. Right. See, but, right. I, w- I would say that's still, that's still not. But it's it's not it's not like what no, like good. what you're referring to, which is um, the church I used to visit when I lived in Nashville that became like my Nashville church. So anytime we went to Nashville, if it was over the weekend, this is the church that we would go to, right? And we made we were connected to people there, right? Pastors there, the the <clears throat> the head pastor, <clears throat> the ex head pastor because he retired now, like he left the church due to burnout. Like, he planted it, whatever. He grew it to be, like, one of the biggest mega churches in, in Nashville. And after a couple of years, he burnt out. And, right. And he quit. And this was, like, maybe, like, two weeks before he announced leaving the church. Right? So who knows whatever happened. But we went. We went. And the funny thing is that, like, what this article is saying is, like, they use, uh, these churches use, Secular songs for for seekers, right? So right, you like you can explain what that means later, but um, right, for me, there is no greater seeker than a teenager, right? Because teenagers, most teenagers are forced to go to church, right? So you try to do things like the pizza and the video games that right. a lot of churches do, right? So to for for me, there's no greater seeker than Everyone that's already at the church, <laughs> right? but no. But I'm saying, like, teenagers—they're right. forced you give, seekers. If you give them an option, they'll stay home. 
Right. They'll stay home and they'll pick their noses before going, you know, like choosing to go to church. The right. majority, not all of them, but not the, all. Right. The there's, there's a, a good chunk of that. Right. So, so when my te- when my son was a teenager and Junie was a teenager, right, that's when this happened. And yo, when he when we're walking towards the church and he's like through the speakers of the foyer and stuff like that, and he's like, "Is that is that the Jackson Five? Right? And I'm like, "Of course not, dude." Like we're like before I can even finish the sentence. Like, <clears throat> yeah, yeah, that is the Jackson Five. Right. Okay. Well, that's interesting. Right. That didn't bother me so much. Right. But when we're inside and we're greeting people, and no, Los wasn't there. But I'm getting coffee. Right. Then it went to. Um, it changed from Jackson Five. I think it was ABC that I was playing, to um, Black Hole Sun. Right. Right, which is but isn't that isn't that the song that the the worship band no, 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 started no, no, off no, on? No, 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 not yet, not yet. It was like the whole time before. So service the so started, the filler music between right. services was all, all secular, secular music. music, right? All secular music, right? Kind of, it's kind of like the warning, right? So then when we get into service, like I'm already like with the eyebrow up and I'm looking at Magda, like, what is this? It's never happened before, right? So when we walk into the sanctuary for service. It was only one worship song, well, one song for worship, and it was These Dreams or Sweet Dreams right. by the Eurythmics. And it wasn't even like like what Kanye's doing, where he's taking his songs and Gospelizing doing them. gospel versions of them. Right. right? It was like <laughs> straight rocked out. The guy, right. I mean, I'm not going to lie. The guy had an amazing like 80s hair rock voice, right? Right. He had an amazing hair on. Right, it wasn't like it was a like a like a like a, like rewritten to make right. a Christian, right? right. You know, it wasn't God's like dreams are made right. of these. None right. of no, none of that. Right, it was the actual song, and that was worship. Right, that was quote unquote worship. Like they did that song, and then they went into the service. Like I'm like, and and Jay Jay wasn't slain in the spirit. He was angry at the spirit. I was pissed. I was pissed. I was so upset. I was I wasn't upset. I was disappointed. Right. I was disappointed. A little I was upset. saddened and disappointed. <laughs> right. And um, I texted the pastor. I texted the pastor. He told me off. He tweeted. He texted me off. <laughs> right? And then, like, it's so funny, like, because I laughed about it, and I'm, st- I st- <laughs> I'm still chuckling about it now, and I laugh every time I remember it, but, like, he blocked me and took me off all his social media. Right. Right? And I thought it was kind of funny. And, um... I thought that. I thought the reaction was kind of funny. And then a couple of weeks later, he announces that he quit. Right. right? And he quit the church, and he's not pastoring anymore. He didn't. He didn't quit God. Like he's still. A, he's still a believer. He's still. Right. He's still a Christian, but he just. He just like, stopped being a pastor. He stopped being a pastor. Um. But right, I I feel that it's such a disappointing thing when you have to, when you feel that you have to, do parlor tricks, right? Or when you feel that you have to seek help from from the world or from what's secular right. to bring people in the church. As far as I'm concerned, as an ex-pastor, right? As far as I'm concerned, um, people who are going to seek God are going to come seek God, right? right? If you got them in the church already, right, or if, or if they're already inside the building, or, or if they were led, if they were led by the Spirit, they're not, they're not even, they don't even know why. They just were like. Right. Yeah, because we've heard that thousands of times, right? Where people are like, you know, I just was like, yo, I, I, I saw this advertisement or I heard Dude, this commercial, and when 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 Magna and I were were, were, were and I went were, to this church, Pastoring Revolve out in in Covington, like five people. It was funny. It was five people. It's like, oh, we were gonna go hang out. We we're gonna go to the mall and just whatever. But we walk past here all the time. Right. right, and normally at nighttime it's closed, and we saw that it was open today. So he said, "Hey, let's go check this place out. Right, let's see what's going on here." Right. Oh, we walked into right. church. Right, like, and they wa- just walked right, and church. they walked in, and Jay was playing "Jump Around" by House House of Pain. House jump of Pain. around, <laughs> jump around for Jesus. Jump around, jump around. Right. So it's like mm-hmm. it's a weird thing, as far as I know, as far as how I feel. Right. They're already in the building. Right. You don't need to do anything to appease the seeker. Because right. if they're seeking, the hardest part, 
the hardest part is already done. Right. They're in the building. They're already. in the building. Whether somebody invited them, whether they went on their own, whether uh, they're trying to reconnect with their with their Christian roots. Right. And so that's all a seeker is, right? A seeker is just some, you know, it's in the word, right? The definition <laughs> is in the word. It's just somebody that that might be looking for God or might be uh, wanting to have that connection to God or, or to, to religion or, I mean, you know, however you want to say it. Right. And so, you know, this idea of seekers, that's a that's actually a rel- relatively new term. It was uh, coined, like, things like in the 80s. Um. And that was and that was out of this this movement out of out of Willow Creek out of Chicago because they're really the ones that kind of they're, they're the ones that kind of push that right their pastor is the one that put which uh, funnily enough many years later the pastor was like Ugh, yeah, I don't, I I don't I, think that wasn't that I, wasn't the I best think I made a mistake yeah that wasn't the best thing because uh, <laughs> uh, because of things but um and so the idea was you know that's why that's that's why you have mega churches. Like you have them now, where it's with the lights and almost like concert atmosphere, right. and and where you know and they, of, they do the giveaways activities. and they do a lot of activities because the idea was you know these people are seeking seeking something, so let's give them something to do, right? Uh, mm-hmm. Let's give them a reason, let's entertain them. a reason to stay. Like um, I remember when I first moved to Atlanta, and I saw this giant billboard for this church that said, "Oh, this is a church for people who don't do church." I'm like, wait, so are you a church or are you not a church? Like, what, we like, are. We like, are a church of, for people who don't do church. <laughs> I don't understand. <laughs> it's, like, it's like a hamster wheel. You just keep kind of keep spinning. All right, so then I was like, like, I hated that. Every time I saw that billboard, I want to like throw tomatoes at it because I'm like, that's the most retarded thing. <clears throat> Even right. if you want to be, I mean, for me, that's like, for me, for me personally, that's like the seeker the seeker church um, motto, right, right. That's like the the tagline. Where right? the where the <laughs> where the non denominational denomination. Denomination. <laughs> so, and so the idea is right. So that so that's the idea. So the idea behind, I I, w- I would say I think to kind of bring back here the idea behind using secular music in in a in a service. So is is that if you have people that uh, have not grown up, um. In Christendom, uh, uh, the idea is, well, if they hear a song that they're familiar with, then they will feel comfortable, and they'll want to stay, and, and they'll want to and they'll want to stay, and and then that way, that's how we can then uh, uh, get them to hear about Jesus. But it's like, it's like an ex, it's like an ex girlfriend of mine, and she became an ex as soon as she said this. <laughs> Right, I don't think I've told you this, but an ex girlfriend of mine, who um, while we were dating, there was this guy who um, came into the church, right, because he saw her outside, right, right, and so he was flirting with her, right, right, and so she was flirting back. Oh, right? how dare you! So I'm like, yo, yo, mira, what are you doing? Ven, ven, you know, like, mira acá. Get that like, come, come here, right? So what are you? What What's are you wrong doing, with you? What are you doing flirting with this kid? I thought we were dating, <laughs> right? Like, what are you doing flirting? With, what are you doing flirting with this kid, right? I'm like, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not a, I'm not a jealous guy, really? but I, but, but I'm also not a guy to be disrespected, right? It's like, what are you doing flirting with this kid? Forget about you know, it. You know, and you know what she tells me? It was to bring him into the church. Yo, God works in mysterious ways, right? If me mm. flirting with him is gonna bring him to the Lord, I was like, oh word, God does not work and. Yo. In those mysterious ways, so, how come God ain't, ne- God ain't never worked that way with me? Right? Ain't nobody ever flirt with me to get me to come to this <laughs> so, church. So I was like, so you know what? Yeah, you're right. God works in mysterious ways, so you can stay flirting with you him. Can stay flirting with and him. We're done. I'm gonna go flirt with this right? other one. No. <laughs> it's like, it's like, like we're done. We're done. We're gonna be we're, done, we're, so in, that you can in, have freedom in Jesus, to lead as in, many guys as you in, want in, to in, the in, Lord. In Jesus, in Jesus' name, <laughs> Hallelujah. Um, <laughs> right. That's that is like. It's the same mentality, right. right? It's the same idea, right? You 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 try to do things that are a little bit or a lot of bit outside of the box and outside of the realm of what scripture shows right. or teaches, or, or, or what's a, or what's appropriate, or what's appropriate, right? To then yeah. to to in the hopes and the thoughts of that'll attract more people to your church, right? And it goes back to you know the the, the you know the I do I will do this. So that people will see that I'm cool 
and they'll think Christians are cool, right? Whatever it is. Right. My, Whatever my, the my, my always my, my, my always way. Right? Go, bring it up. Right, right. Yeah. I'm gonna go to the strip club. I'm gonna hand out tracks, you know, like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like that's not what you're gonna be handing out. Um right, so it's and of course I always say that because it's just the funniest. Most extreme thing I could think of. As I was gonna, we're gonna go to say. church. Hey, this Sunday at church, we're having communion. We're having ladies communion. drink free. Ladies, <laughs> ladies. <laughs> no cover charge. <laughs> oh, that's terrible. It's terrible. Um, so, so in, in this article, that was one, the so the first idea was you know the idea of making people that are looking for God comfortable by using songs that they're familiar with. The problem is, is that. Um, and I like he goes, it's not our responsibility to make people comfortable because the gospel should make you uncomfortable. Correct. You know, how many times have people like me or Jay we've been sitting in church and then we're like, Man, that you know, I got you know, the whole like, oh, my toes got stepped on, or oh, you know, like my feelings were hurt because <laughs> he was speaking truth. I feel like he was speaking directly to right? me. And he and, <laughs> and he was. Especially when he's like Jay. <laughs> um uh, and he starts telling you the things you need to stop doing, which I told him to tell you. You know, <laughs> so I'm I'm the anyway. Um, so that was the first thing. So, but, so we got to be careful. We got to be. So the one of the things we got to be careful about what we're bringing in to try to make people feel comfortable, right? Because what ends up happening is, is we start if if we let things creep in, it's a slippery slope. Then they begin to change the culture of what king, of that of what kingdom culture should be. Correct. Right in that. So. And then, and then the funny thing, the, the, it's it's funny to me, right? Because, okay, so when when I when when I was <laughs> when I so, was, so when I was a gangbanger in New York, right? Right. And when I was like, you know, I, I I gave my life back to the Lord. I need to, you know, you know, want to be busy in church, whatever. Right. When I when, whenever I would like have my slips, and I would go back to the corners or go back to the park to hang out with with the other bangers, right? They would force me to leave. It's like, no, no, you're not gonna come back to this. You need to take your butt back to church, right? Right, because you're nicer. When right, you're there's a, like there's a difference. Like you're nicer because yeah, exactly. Right, there's so so this so this will kind of lead us into the second, and we can kind of like roll these together. So the second the second point this guy brought up, which is great, was like singing, singing or playing popular secular songs on Sundays can have a number of effects. Some good, some not so good. Uh, what are people hearing as these songs are being played? Are they thinking, "Wow, these Christians really relate to me"? Or are they thinking, gee, I never knew Christians listen to the same kind of music I do. We're really not that different. Or why are these Christians trying to act so much like me? I was hoping they could provide some answers to my problems. Right. <laughs> or the last one, why do I come to church to hear second-rate versions of songs I listen to? Why don't they sing about something that has changed their lives rather than something I already know? Yeah. And so in this example, he talks about how they were... They were, uh, they, 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 uh, there was a, a sermon. The sermon was going to be on, on sexuality. And so they used John Mayer's Your Body's a Wonderland. And it's like, if you, if you, it was it the, 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 the point he said was, was, which was interesting, is like, if, if it was like that, that they read the lyrics to make points, it's one, it, it was a different effect than you've got the worship team up there singing this song that's about sex. Right, and then just before then, they might have they're singing "I Could Sing of Your Love Forever" or they were singing, you know, uh, I don't know, whatever other, you know, Jesus, <laughs> I surrender all, right? <laughs> and then, then, then before the sermon, they're they're singing a song that you, when you hear it, you don't you don't think godly things about it, dude. Like no lie, when I used to do hip hop, this is when I stopped using secular tracks. When I used to do hip hop, I went to this concert that I was invited to to rap in. Right. And somebody used, I think it was um that 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 it was a Diddy track. Right. It was a Diddy track, the one where he did with one of the whinings and whatever. Right. Um and yeah, as soon as I opened up the church doors and I heard it, right, instantly like my memories just threw me right back. Right. Those lyrics came out. Right. Up. Right. Not not just the lyrics, but what I was doing. Right. Right. And I was not comfortable at all. <laughs> right. I, the first thing that hit my mind was like, what are they doing? The second thing was like, I will never, ever use like a secular track to like 
to try to rhyme Christian rhymes over it. Right, right. Because there's a difference, you know, like I, you know, and, and having, you know, done a lot of light uh, events and stuff, you know, it's one thing if you use, right, like a 30 second, you know, snippet on a freestyle. But what Jay's talking about is when, is back in the day, what people would do, and probably even today, right? I'm sure. They take the that. whole song and they would just write a Christian rap, mm-hmm. right? Christian lyrics over this whole song that if you know the song you're not you're not hearing the christian rap you're 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 hearing in your mind right the lyrics of the original song yeah because that's what you know yeah but the the it, it was more than that with me i was complete yo son like, right I, I was transported right and and right <laughs> right because right because it's like you know depending on the right because depending on the you know, music affects us all differently, yeah. and certain songs take us to certain moments in time. Certain songs are songs that we liked, or we might kind of like, but we don't listen to anymore because we know the message isn't right. the thing that and, we want to be putting into our into our minds. And the thing is that this is like how you and I talk about. This is where where the 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 pursuit of rev, of rev, relevance goes right. bad, right? When you try so hard to be relevant, right, over being holy. Right, that it has the <clears throat> adverse effect. It has, it, you know, it goes, the 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 response and the reaction goes against what you were trying to do. Right. right? So it's a like it's a it's a good idea, but it's it was um, implemented wrong. Right. right. Because and, I, and and anytime someone asks me about this or they talk to me about this, right, I always go back to this one question, like tell me one place in scripture where Jesus felt that he had to do. What the non-believers did, or what the heathens were doing, so that he can reach them. Right. Well, one I mean, example. Uh, give me one example in all of Scripture, where people, you know, it, the, the idea was, hey, you know what? If I do this, without dire consequences, right? Because Solomon, right, built all the different altars yeah. to appease his wives, and what happened? He lost. He lost the kingdom yep. that David had built. Right? Yep. Did you follow me? Right? Because Solomon was David's son. And Solomon asked for wisdom. And God said, Because you asked for wisdom, I'm going to like just give you even more on top of that. And then Solomon, because he wanted to appease his wives who did not believe in his God. Which was his first. Which was the which was the, was the, the first or the, well, the second the second mistake was the appeasing, right? The first one was marrying these women. What happened to the kingdom? The kingdom fell apart. It fractured. Right? It fractured. Why? It went into because he tried to appease. And it was so the same thing, this is the same idea. Is is that and then, you know, if you uh, now listen, I will be honest with you. If if we're doing like a street party and you throw in a f- kind of like a few a few songs that are you know they're okay right well, it's like it's like, like when we we played uh where is the love one time right because it, it kind of went along with what we were talking about and it's just it's a it's a fun song but it's like when 412 when 412 is doing um it's funny cuz 412 is the official DJ of the Peachtree Road Race right right so he'll be out there on this big old platform right. whatever and and he's playing nothing but christian songs right, right. and then every now and then who throw in like thirty or minute of right. just the track, right? Right, not the song, right? Right, just the track where people because that's not that's not a Christian venue, it's not a Christian thing, right? Right, so people are like oh yeah yeah, and then who going who throw on some uzu high, <laughs> right? right? So like I know like at the church I go to like they've had events where they've had DJ and the DJs played. "Quote unquote secular songs, but it was at the event, right? It wasn't like the church service. Right. But then it was stuff like the Jackson Five. Mm. It was, you know, it's stuff that it because there is a difference. I believe there is a difference between something that's just fun and clean and clean, and then something that is dirty and innuendo. And if if most of the track has to be has to be edited, then you know, well, maybe I should be playing this song. You know, this this is not a song we should be listening not to. Not only that, but you know, I just feel that." Okay, ready? And this is where we get a lot of the argument that I told you about. Let me pull up the notes again. All right, so let me, while well, you think of putting that, and then the third thing, because it all, it all comes together. So the third thing that this, this guy points out yeah. is that um, the, the, the question was, you know, um, should we seek to evangelize non-Christians during our times of corporate worship? And so this guy's response is absolutely, 
But is playing songs by you two or other popular artists the best way to do that? No, evangelism involves proclaiming the gospel, right. which is the good news that Christ died in our place for our sins to reconcile us with God. Evangelism should be a natural overflow whoop, whoop, of a group of Christians <laughs> who are passionately, clearly, compellingly extolling the greatness of God and his mercy in Jesus Christ, not trying to sound like the world. So that doesn't mean we can never use a popular song to make a specific point in a meeting or that it isn't wise at times to reference what the world is singing, but there are dangers in making singing secular songs on a Sunday morning a regular practice. Songs speak not only through their lyrics, but also, which is what Jay pointed out about the song, right, through the associations people make with them. Right. So, and there are a lot of times where, and it's funny, I've only gotten these arguments from Christian artists. Right. Right? Or Christian worshipers or Christian worship leaders. <laughs> or Christian where, DJs. Right? <laughs> right. Or Christian <laughs> DJs where, where, they try to, they, where they try to they try to argue that there's no distinction between secular music and sacred music. Right? right. Or or secular and sacred. Like they try to, oh, well, what's the difference? What's secular really? And what's sacred really? So like I, like I told you I did before, I'm going to do it again here on the podcast. Right. Go to the right? dictionary. We're going to go straight. To the secular dictionary. The secular dictionary, right? <laughs> this is just the definition right out of Merriam Webster. This isn't a definition that I'm getting out of a Christian study book or a Christian right. like, dictionary. Christian college book or a Christian dictionary, or, right? Yeah, or John this the is, Baptist dictionary right? of Christian words. Right? right. This is just your normal Merriam Webster's dictionary. Right. Google right? Where you can you define can, secular. Or, you can, or yeah. Or you can Google, <laughs> right, definition of secular, definition of sacred, and this is what you get, right? So the definition of secular is denoting attitudes, activities, or other things that have no religious or spiritual base basis, right? And I added the synonyms, right? So you can see, right, the right. synonyms for secular are non-religious, non-church, temporal, worldly, earthly, Profane. Profane. Right? I like that last one, profane, right? Yeah, it's a good word. Right? So it's a fun word. Profane. Now we go to the definition of sacred. Sacred. Right? The definition of sacred is connected with God or the gods or dedicated to a religious purpose and so deserving veneration. Ooh. What does veneration mean? That's uh, like uh, deer meat. Like what? Deer meat. You're so dumb. <laughs> That's venison. <laughs> Veneration is, uh, I know what it means. It means worship. Worship, yes. Right? I, I, that's what I said. Yeah, right? Synonyms of sacred is holy, hallowed, hallowed blessed. Be thy name. Blessed, blessed. Consecrated. Sanctified. Dedicated. dedicated venerated. Revered. 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 Right? You know, so you want to know what the difference between secular and sacred? That's the difference, right? Secular means profane, having nothing to do with God. With or, right, or let's, religion, let's or, do or, just or, do it in a more religion. general sense, right? Has nothing to do with religion. With religion. <laughs> Any right. kind of religion. <laughs> no religion. Sacred means having dedicated to a religious purpose, and so it's not separated, and so it's dedicated to a religious purpose right. and must be worshipped, right? And right. So if it's if it's the time of worship of right. the church, right, then let that time of worship be sacred. Right. And not be given to the secular, which wants nothing to do with religion or with God. Or with the sacred, right. And, 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 that's, the, and that's the problem with using... So like I say, I don't have... Like personally, I don't have a problem if you were to quote... Like if you find a song and there's like a, a verse that you're like, yo, this really kind of highlights the dangers of what I'm speaking of. Or it really kind of points to what I'm speaking of. And you quote it, it's one thing. But the, the danger, the danger, and this is the thing we, we can't say enough. The danger is when... Uh, during a time of worship, uh, and then after, right? You're 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 playing, you're you're worshiping God, or you're using or you're using uh, these secular songs, and you're trying to make them to, so that they so that they worship, right? You try to make them into worship songs, right? You know, and I and I've heard people say that before. Oh well, that song is like a worship song, you know? It's like he could be singing to God. But he's not. But it's not, and he's not. Right? So like, it's like if Marilyn Manson wrote a song, and you listen to it, you're like, oh, wow, that could be a worship song. But it's not, <laughs> because Marilyn Manson wrote it. You know, that's important, right? It's important. Who wrote oh, the song? You shouldn't judge him. 
Oh, I'm judging. Yeah. I'm not judging them. I'm inspecting the fruit, sister. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, you can. You can because of the fruit. Right. So so the thing is, is that is that, you know, what we wanna what we wanna cause because this is something that is that is is creeped in more and more and more and more and more is the idea of playing worship uh, pl- the, the idea of playing kind of these songs during a time when we've gathered to worship God. And even if you played the song after 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 you did worship and then you played the song because you try to connect it to the sermon, then you just compl- it's like you've completely washed away and you've completely shifted the tone or the tenor of what you just experienced. Right. right? You're like, man, the Holy Spirit is moving. And then the next thing you're playing is a, 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 a Your Body's a Wonderland, which is a song about a dude who's talking about how he wants to sex up this chick. And you've completely changed the tone of what you just of what you just experienced. And so there's a very there's a very real danger in that. And then then the other thing I think that we want to make sure that we say is what? You know, we have to be we have to be careful of the secular music that we're listening to. Even apart from what we've allowed into the church, but we have to be careful what we're allowing into the temple. Right. Right? Because scripture tells us what? That our body is what? It's a temple. Is a temple. So we have to so we have to make so we have to make sure that, you know, um, <clears throat> especially especially when people make the argument, well, you know, I don't have to go to church to experience God. You know, I can be in the woods and experience God. So you're trying to experience God by listening to songs that were not written. For God. For experiencing God. Mm-hmm. Or to God. Or for God. Or about God. Right? Right? What else you got? That's it. That's it. That's oh. it. I think you know the thing is, the thing is, you know we we it's it's almost like that we're purposely shifting away from holiness, right? Right? Or or seeking holiness or the pursuit of holiness, right? It's like holiness is an old fashioned idea now, where you know you just you know you want to be cool or relevant over being holy and right. separated. Right. right, for God. And nothing in Scripture talks about being relevant. Nothing in Scripture talks about being current with the times. Everything in Scripture <laughs> points to being holy. And Jesus said, right? thou shalt wear. Seeking holiness yeah. over all things. Your to be Christ-like over all things. And it's sad. It's sad because whether you believe in the rapture or not, whether you believe in the rapture or not, a lot of people are going to be left behind in the church while being relevant. Right. Right? Whether you believe in hell or not, a lot of people are going to be on one side of eternity yep. being cool and being relevant. So here's the thing, right? I've never been told I've never I've never been told I've never I've never had anyone say to me, Man, you know, I really connect with you because you're not you know, when any any time I've been told I wasn't like other Christians, it wasn't because I was trying to act like them. Right. I was still being me, but I mean I'm me within the context of my faith. Right. I'm not me within the context of me wanting you to think I'm the coolest dude right. ever. Same. Like, I've only been told, wow, you're a Christian? I didn't think you were a Christian. Well, why not? Oh, because, you know, you're like in a t-shirt and jeans. Yeah. Oh, you're a, you're a pastor wearing J's? You're I wear, didn't think pastors wear J's. You're wearing a flash shirt right now. Right? <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> right? So it wasn't because I was trying to be like them. It was more because... I didn't look like the concept of what they grew up with. Right. Right. Or what, you know, the idea that they had. Because right. I had jeans and I had J's on. Right. Or I had a t shirt and J's on. So it's not because right. so, I was looking and acting like them. Like right. it wasn't because they couldn't tell the <clears throat> difference. Yeah. So we just want to make sure, we just want to share that because, uh, you know, in, in all the things we do, it's all we're always thinking about, we're always thinking and talking about these things. Uh, especially since we have contact with a lot of young artists and always trying to in- encourage them to be, you know, th- it's, it's you have to be who God created you to be. But even in that, God created you to be someone that's going to shine light on him. Right. God created you. But then part of that purpose is to shine light back on him. It's not to just be this, you know, person this person out here that everyone likes 
but then never shines, shines light back to him, especially if you say you're a believer, especially if you say you're a Christian, um, especially if you say that the things that you do are to bring God glory. Make sure you're bringing God glory. Make sure you're bringing God glory. So I think that's it. I think we're done. Uh, don't forget the 26th. Uh, don't forget that, uh, hey, man, thanks for listening. Or hey, man, hey, woman, hey, child. Hey, people. Hey, people. <laughs> hey, humans. Hey, persons. Hey, theys. Hey, zeds. Uh, and everyone else. No, we don't do that. Get <laughs> the hell out of here. Uh, <laughs> anyway, thanks for joining <laughs> us. As always, uh, I'm Joaquin. And I'm still Jay. And we'll see y'all next week. Thanks for listening. Remember to go to the overflowpodcast.com to subscribe to the podcast on all streaming platforms and catch up on all the links of the week. And don't forget to follow our playlist on Spotify.